I was very confused. I was asked if I had a will and a power of attorney. I thought I was having a panic attack because I've never had anything like that happen to me before. The day uh, my daughter was 11 weeks old, I had, it was I think my first or second week back to work after having her. Our little one was at the babysitters for the first time, you know, just, you know, an average day, but a stressful day. And then I had came home from work and opened my garage door and our dog was outside. So when I opened the garage door, I thought he was inside and he ran out. So when he ran out of the house, we followed him down the street and he got hit by a car. We wrapped him up and we decided to go to the animal hospital. When we were at that animal hospital, um, I called my dad and was just like, you know, if the dog does not pull through, how do I break it to my son that, you know, his best friend passed away? So as I'm telling my dad this story, I could just, I started sweating. And I just started, you know, feeling a little sick to my stomach. I told my husband maybe like a sugar's drop, like I've always been very healthy. So I was like, do I have a sugar? problem or what, what's going on I didn't understand so I asked him to go get you know one of the nurses or somebody from the front counter and by then I was by the sink in the room and I was you know putting water on my face like I just I could not I felt like I couldn't breathe right um, and my husband came back in the room and I kind of like leaned over on him and I would just kept telling him like I can't breathe and then the nurse for there came in the room and by then I was on the floor and then the ambulance got there they gave me the nitro and the oxygen they put me in the ambulance and I felt better so then I was like okay I I'm having a panic attack I've never had one but that this must be it well then I get to the hospital and you know I get asked if I have a will and a power of attorney and I'm like, what, what are you guys talking about? And they're talking about a heart attack. And my husband wasn't even there yet. Um, they told him to call my family, you know, like it wasn't good. And they just took me right to the cath lab. Um, after that, um, they kept saying it's the dog. Like you, you must be really attached to your dog, to your dog. You know, it wasn't until later on that they put all the pieces of the puzzle together to tell me that that's the type of heart attack that I had and it was caused from pregnancy and the do it was an abundance of multiple things. The stress being back to work, having my daughter, the hormone change, the dog, it was just all of it mixed in one. Um, so they gave me some medicine and sent me home. Exactly a week later, almost the exact same time, I got the feelings again, but this time I was just sitting on my couch. And they never, they didn't tell me the biggest chance of this happening to you again is within seven days. They kind of just tell you to go home. And I got the same feelings all over again. I got the cold sweat, but this time I got in the car myself and I told my husband, like, just drive, drive me to the hospital. And you know, we had the baby and my son there, and he's like, no, you know, we need to get somebody over here. We can't just, you know, leave the kids. And, you know, so he got a hold of his sister-in-law, and by then he was already on the phone with 911 because I couldn't, I was already back on the floor at that point. And so they brought me back to the hospital. Um, they let me sit Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night with on a nitro drip. And I remember telling my mom, like, I, I can't do this again. If this happens again, that's it for me. It took too much out of me that second time. And, but nobody seemed really concerned. Until Monday morning, I'm the first patient to the cath lab. And then I, I don't remember too much. I remember crying. I remember my dad and my husband being there. Um, and then I woke up after I had the triple bypass. And it was a rough time, clearly. 
you know, they put me on like the cholesterol, you know, like my cholesterol was fine. They just gave me the typical, you know, change your diet and, you know, I, and, you know, I was 33, you know, and my, my arteries were fine. Like I, I didn't really understand. That's why the second time was when the whole like left LAD shut down and they were, you know, very surprised. You know, I think they thought when I first went back that I was just being paranoid, like, you know, that I had chest pain, you know, because I mean, they let me, they did not do any tests on me till that Monday and I went in there on a Friday night and sat that whole time until Monday when they finally, then it was a big panic. I think they were down the wrong trail with the fact that they tried to tell me at first that it was the dog after I kept explaining that. It, it, you know, the average person doesn't care for the sight of blood. You know, the, the average person is going to be upset if, you know, their animal is hurt, which the dog survived. <laughs> so the dog's okay. We still have them to this day. Um, but it's like if somebody's telling you something, you know, just you really got to listen to what they're saying because, you know, I was lucky that I had the doctors that took that next step to figure out what it was. You know, because that's something I read too, is that a lot of women, they get, you know, told that it's nothing and they go home and then they die. And I just wish they had more information because once I went to Mayo Clinic and I met with Dr. Tweet and, you know, started learning the statistics of it and it was just like, if someone had told me, hey, this could happen to you again, you know, 20% chance in the first seven days, you need to be on bed rest. Well, that's what I would have done but I'm at home I'm cleaning up the house I'm taking care of the baby I'm taking care of my son you know there if when you're a mom there's no time to relax but had they said you know you need to be on bed rest for a week or so to completely you know to heal better from this before the next step then maybe the whole next step never would have happened you know and, and because of this unfortunately you know, the scad may have healed, my, you know, everything from the surgery may have healed, but now it's diagnosed me with other heart problems that I have to deal with in my 30s with two young kids at home. So I had triple bypass. And now, like I said, I have the mild leaking mitral valve and the moderate leaking tricuspid valve that I'm dealing with on top of, you know, the medicine that I take and going to the doctor every six months and checking with the FMD and you know it's it's a lot to deal with when you have young kids at home and a husband and work <laughs> and life <laughs> part of me feels like had the doctors known more to say you know take that bed rest and don't do anything you know and you do have a greater chance you know the first year you know just give you more information than just tell you to change your diet and go on this set of heart medicines. You know, I, I don't have a cholesterol problem. I don't have blockage in my arteries. You know, they change your diet in the hospital room to this no sodium, you know, and that's not what my problem was. The first year you're just focused on the fact that, oh my God, I'm still alive. And then the second year was like the scared all the time, you know, and, and I was scared the first year too. For a while, I didn't, I slept with a nightlight on. I didn't want to fall into deep sleep. I always wanted to be at home because the hospital is two blocks from our house. You know, I, I didn't want to go anywhere, you know, and then I started to feel better again. But then it's like you have the sadness that kicks in of, you know, what happens to my kids? And then you get angry. Because this stuff shouldn't happen to people like this. This is the last thing I should be worrying about. And instead of being in my 30s and enjoying life and you know, now I'm watching what I eat. I'm watching what I, you know, I don't drink anymore, barely. And, you know, your your whole mindset is different. You know, I, I had to go see a 
psychiatrist. I had to go start marriage counseling. Because it's just, it's a lot to deal with. You know, I got, I got diagnosed with PTSD. They tried to give me depression medicine, but it doesn't, it made it worse. Because then you just feel like you're in a daze all the time. And it didn't make anything better. You know, you try not to think about it, but you think about it every day. And now, now I'm just to the point where, you know, I, yes, I am working out. I'm not, you know, after talking to the Mayo Clinic and them telling me, like, yes, you know, you could go ahead and work out. If you feel like you can do it, do it. Because now, you know, there was a lot of restrictions in the beginning, and now they're changing a lot of that because they're saying, you know, you don't, it's not a typical heart attack, so you can't say, don't lift, don't do this, don't do that. You know, so I started taking workout classes. I started eating better and just trying to focus on that just to keep my mind off everything else. And I feel like that actually has helped, you know. The, I did the cardiac rehab, but that's not, that's not a place for people like us. You know, everybody gives you the looks and the stares and you're in there with, you know, 80 year olds and you're on a treadmill and it's just, I don't feel like that's, I get the point of it, but you really just have to find your own space and deal with it differently, I feel. But there's, there's just not enough of us out there for them to do things like that. The set, when I started going into the second year, I decided to go to Mayo Clinic because no one here could give me any answers. So I went to Mayo. I met with Dr. Tweet. I also got diagnosed with FMD. So that was another, okay, you know, now at least we're getting some type of clarification on a little more of this. And then um, my echoes now show that the heart attack itself has healed but now I have a leaking mitral valve that's only mild, but now I have a moderate leaking tricuspid valve. So I don't really know what's going to happen next. You can't say it'll never happen to you because, believe me, I've always said nothing like that would ever happen to me because I've always been healthy. I've never had problems with weight. I've never had any medical issues. You know, never in my life. I've never even broken anything and to go from one extreme to the other is is a story really you you have to be your own advocate in a way too because some doctors may tell you know my doctor at home told me you know gave me the basic combination of pills for my heart attack and then I go to Mayo and they tell me you know I, I don't need to be on two statins and you know they took me off, you know, one or two medicines and then I started to feel better. You know, my doctor didn't agree with it out back at home, but I went with what Mayo Clinic said. And then, you know, you read all this stuff, you know, you can't lift more than 10 pounds and you, your heart rate has to be this and, you know, we're, we're all so different and if you keep listening to all of that, you know, you're, you're never going to get anywhere. I actually talked to Dr. Tweed at Mayo Clinic again and she was the one that told me you know if you want to do a plank do a plank if you want to go to the gym go to the gym you know but listen to your body you have to keep an eye on your heart rate you have to you know take everything into consideration if you feel like something's off stop doing what you're doing you know I, I only lift 15 pounds but it's more than what I was lifting you know so you have to listen to your own body, if, otherwise you're just going to be scared of everything.